What's going on YouTube? Today I'm going to show you how I make wigs for tiny sized dolls like this Eizen Obitsu Hybrid. One of the most important things for small scale wigs is the fabric for the wig cap. I use this soft flexible tool because it's much thinner than most of the jersey fabrics that people use for other wig caps and it doesn't show between bare wefts. We all know how to make wig caps. Apply protective plastic, apply the fabric, I apply another layer of fabric, tie everything off, use a fabric glue, because it's waterproof and coat that shit thick. You can see that the wig cap is still quite thin. It's very transparent and in some cases there are still little holes where the glue hasn't gone through. Cut it up to the shape you need, check that it fits your doll's head all right and then you are ready to go. But before you start gluing you'll probably want to apply a plastic protective layer on your doll's head again just to be safe. Okay, so the most important thing to remember when making wigs for dolls with small heads is that you need to use as little fiber as possible so you don't overload the wig and make it way too voluminous. For this wig, I'm making the parting line at the top, the single layer of wefts that surround the parting line, and the two layers that make up the rest of the wig. I'm only using three layers of fiber to make this wig nice and thin. When doing the parting, make sure you keep the glue as minimal as possible with enough space in between that you can cut out a little bit of space to put in the wefts for the parting line. Keep it very neat at the top here. On such a small scale, we have very little room for mistakes. Make sure you cover any bare spaces on the wig, including the other layers of fiber or the wig cap. Don't be afraid to add a bit of bulk back here at the end of the part line, but be mindful not to do this anywhere else, otherwise the wig might end up looking a little bit bulky or unfortunate. As you can see, there is a very, very thin line of glue down the part, and it will all be entirely concealed by the wefts that we use to create the part. Most people know how to create wefts, but one tip I want to give you is to use a plastic or silicon cutting mat rather than freezer bags as the mat is reusable and this minimizes waste. Once everything is dry, you can take the wig off the head and as you can see, the inside is still fairly transparent and you can see the color of the wig through. And we are going to cut a hole out in the middle of the glue line for where the parting will be. I make an incision with a blade and cut down the length of the part. Then I remove a bit of the fabric with a small pair of scissors so there's a space to insert the wefts. Then I'm going to cut off the wefts. As you can see, there is a space in this weft where it doesn't look completely covered and you can sort of see the color behind it through it. This is actually a really good spot to cut wefts in half because you do want some smaller pieces and some quite wide pieces for filling up the inside of the parting line. So as you can see, it is a little bit transparent in that one area, so I'm going to cut it in half and make two very small pieces. And the small pieces are under a centimeter wide, whereas the large ones are a few centimeters wide. Most of the time you don't want them to be wider than the actual length of the parting line, otherwise they won't fit. So once again, we get some fabric glue. We get our brush and then we shove some of the pieces of the wefts into the parting line. You're going to want to do one side at a time and let that dry so that you don't make anything too messy. I 
insert the weft into the parting hole, apply a glue and push it into place until it feels strong and secure and then I'll keep adding both large and small wefts until the glue beneath is completely hidden. And when that's dry, we do it all again to the other side. The ultimate goal of the parting line is to conceal all of the remaining visible glue while creating a neat section where the hair falls from. So take some time filling it up and making sure that everything looks neat and tidy from the top. If there's still a hole in your wig like there was for mine, just press the wig together for a few minutes while it's sitting on the doll's head and while the glue is still wet, and the glue from the wefts will hold the two sides together and seal the hole up. Once you've let everything dry overnight, you can take the wig off the doll, remove the plastic and give the wig a test fitting before you do some styling. As you can see, my wig is a tiny bit loose because I ended up pushing the wig back as the hairline was just way too low. To get that stubborn weft to sit down, I use a spritz of water with a curling iron. Now is also the best time to give the wig a good brush to remove any excess fibres or dust. Oh my god, that weft did just not want to sit down. You can also cut off the excess wig cap and give it final touches that make it look nice and pretty. And that's it! That's the basic process of making a wig for small doll heads. Keep in mind you need to use an extremely thin fabric for the cap and no more than three layers of fibre, and your wig should turn out pretty and proportional every time. I have no idea how I'm going to style this particular wig. I'm thinking braids or something, but if you have any ideas, please let me know. And if this tutorial helps or inspires you in any way, please show me your creations, I'd love to see them. So that's all I have for you today, so take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!